Oh, look at that. All right. So this is our 10, 10 from the nation's prayer call on October 12th with Rabbi Alan Adler from um, Efrat. Hi, Alan. Uh, how are you is, doing? Ef Efrat, uh, what the press calls the West Bank, what we call Judea and Samaria. So we're in the Judea part. Yeah. I think the Werps are in the Samaria part. Is that right? I would say yes, I think. Uh, we are up in Harbor Ka. Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, boy. Well, Alan, um, we were just talking of, and as Barbara said, I think she expressed what Steve and I both are thinking and many others. Um, we're flooded with information, with the images uh, coming out of the Negev and what happened on Simchat Torah. Um, you know, it's, we, we just have to stop and not look at them for a while. And then we are hearing news from our friends like you and uh, and others who are. No one is without loss right now. So, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very similar to what the Torah um, speaks about with the plagues in Egypt, especially mm -hmm. with the the last one, the plague of the death of the firstborn. I think the Torah has something like and uh, there wasn't a house without somebody affected by that 10th plague. Yeah. So it kind of feels that way. You know, uh, if if there are people in Israel who are not yet directly affected, even peripherally, um, my big fear is that, um, you know, the numbers right now of those who have been killed uh, is very, very high. It's likely to be reported to get higher because I have a feeling that the numbers are being released very, very slowly, so it's not too too overwhelming. Um, and it's very likely that uh, every house will have, what do I mean by affected? Not that, God forbid, every house will have somebody uh, within their home that has been uh, held hostage, God forbid, or killed, God forbid, or injured, but they will know somebody. Somebody will know somebody who has been affected by this in the worst way. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to equate people, soldiers who are on the front line with the average uh, citizen in Israel, the average Jewish citizen or citizen in Israel. I don't want to equate the two. But in some very real way, we're all on the front line of this one. And, and everybody is affected in some way. Um, here in Efrat, We've had um, some uh, sirens, air raids. We've gone to our uh, safe room a few times, but not a whole lot. Uh, but in other places that are close to Gaza and that are close to the north, where um, Hezbollah seems to be ruling, and they they are reported to be 10, 10 times as powerful as mm -hmm. Hamas. Somebody once uh, recently called Hamas the younger sister of Hezbollah. So um so we we don't get the brunt of it as other Jewish communities are getting the brunt of it and constantly hearing sirens and alarms and going into their safe rooms often for hours and hours at a time very cramped spaces kids are there um and you don't get the signal to leave until sometimes hours and hours later. Mm -hmm which is a very, very precarious existence. Mm. Precarious is one, that's one word. Um, you know, I am looking at this as a historian. I am reminded of the images and the things I've read and things I've heard of World War II. And, um, you know, our, our 10 from the Nations tour, we went through Yad Vashem. Yeah. Um, I've been to the Holocaust Museum in, in Washington. I went to the, the Prague Jewish Memorial, the whole Jewish quarter in Prague. Uh, I've been to Dachau. I've been to Auschwitz. The pictures that I've seen coming out of um, the south of Israel are that level of awful, wicked, demonic, satanic. How could anyone do this? And this is 
Israel the size of New Jersey with a population of about 10 million, 20% of Jewish. How can anyone see this? Right. Uh, 75% of Jewish. Yes. In Israel. Thank uh, you. The other 70... 25% are, are other religions. Yes. And how can anyone see this and not make that connection and realize it's an existential threat? And therefore, this has to be a war to complete victory. And yet, mm -hmm. and yet people are denying that. I mean, my wife had a conversation this morning with a friend whose family is wondering, how can Israel do this to, to Gaza? So, Ilan, how do we help? How do we, how do we combat that? Well, you know, the Jewish community is, uh, is uh, starting to read the uh, Holy Torah over again, we uh, we go from Genesis to Deuteronomy, from creation to the death of Moses. We mm -hmm. divide those five books of Moses into 54 parts. And every Shabbat, we read another part. Uh, anyway, this, this Shabbat, we begin at the very beginning, at the beginning of uh, Breshit, the beginning of Genesis, the creation story, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, etc., etc. And um, <clears throat> what we find there is that... Um, in, in the beginning, Cain and Abel, uh, Adam and Eve, placed in the Garden of Eden, and mm -hmm. they are um, warned not to eat of the tree of good and evil, of life and death, of right and wrong. Now, there are many Jewish commentators who talk about why doesn't God want them to eat from the tree and gain that sense of good and evil, etc. But we, we really live in a world today where for some people, it's so obfuscated that they just cannot distinguish between good and bad, good and evil. I mean, this is this is not just a worry for Israel. This is a defining moment for everybody. This is a defining moment, as if to say, which side are you on? Yeah. Are you on the side of good and life or are you on the side of death and evil? And once again, the Jewish people end up being the canary in the coal mine. Mm. Because mm. if we don't take care of this in the way that it needs to be taken care of, minimizing as much as possible any collateral damage, but this is really a war not just for us. I see this as a defining war and a defining moment for humanity. Mm. Like if we can't take care of this, then we are paralyzed. And what's next? What's next and where next? So, um, you know, for me, this affects me on three different levels. This, The war, I was born here. I was born in the city of Yafo, Jaffa, um, many decades ago. So it affects me as an Israeli, as a native Israeli. Uh, it affects me as a Jew, a Jew who knows that our history is... Um, is overwhelmed by the kind of hatred that we have uh, been the brunt of. So it affects me as an Israeli. It affects me as a Jew. It affects me as a human, which is what you alluded to, Al. Yeah. How, how can you be human and be callously indifferent to human life? Mm -hmm. How can you watch those videos and go, oh, I, I think... Uh, I, I think the perpetrators uh, need protection. I think the perpetrators, I, I, I saw something that stunned me today. I got a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of emails. I cannot keep up with them. Yeah. There's a lot of measures of support through uh, WhatsApp, Messenger. I can't keep up with them, which is very nice. It's very lovely. And I'm, I'm happy to be overwhelmed by so many messages of support, especially from people who I haven't heard from in years in years, which is lovely, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, at, at the same time, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I know for myself that as a human, I saw this question today, which is a question of Jewish law. Is it proper, and I was stunned by the question, is it proper to deny hospitalization or healing for terrorists who are still alive and were injured, etc., who are taken to one of the local hospitals, uh, is it moral to give them what they need to heal? Terrorists. And I was kind of floored by that because my my uh, my answer is, 
I, that's, I'm just speaking for myself. My answer is no terrorist should leave the place of terror alive. This is my personal feeling. I'm not representing any other organization or I'm not representing Judaism, but I feel that anybody who has a callous indifference to human life, who can chop and cut and and uh, put babies and uh, all of that that we saw and that we hear about, no, you don't deserve that kind of treatment, literally treatment. You don't deserve it. Uh, go to your own house. You don't deserve it from a Jewish hospital. That's my personal feeling. I, 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 coming to that place, we're totally agreeing with you. The spirit of Amalek must be destroyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and my son Samuel and I were talking, and we talked about this a little bit last night. Uh, and he actually looked it up for me. I'm trying try to see where he found it. It was actually um, uh, Rav Eliezer. And I think this is all the way back about the 8th century. Okay. And he basically he said, anyone who becomes merciful upon the cruel will end up being cruel to the merciful. Yeah. And he references King Saul. Yeah, right. Being King merciful Saul. To, to, yeah. to the... The Amalekite, the right. Agag, and then he references King Saul slaying all the priests that gave David food. Yes. Um, so we see this. Where was that in the city of Nov? Is that what no, happened? In no, or no, yeah, Nov, not Nov. Yeah. Dep yeah. Depends Nob. on if you're looking yeah. at it, English right, or right. Uh, this. This is old King James. It's a knob. Right. <laughs> Nob. <laughs> it's a vet, not a bet, I guess. So I, yes. I, I stand in Hebrew, corrected. it's a V, right? But anyway, yes. yeah. So I really, and I, I look at these other things. You know, woe to those who you know exchange good for evil and evil for good. And you know, you're going back to Isaiah, Proverbs 17. It's um, he who justifies the wicked and um, condemns the the just, both of them alike, are an abomination to Hashem. So right. I think we need to recognize evil and eradicate it. Um, this I, is not, I agree with you. This is not like many are saying that they're, they're acting like animals. Animals do not do this. Animals mm -hmm. are not evil. Animals mm -hmm. are not cruel. Not even a rabid dog is cruel like this. This is evil that needs to be stomped out. I agree with you. And, 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 and that's, that's why I hope Israel... I hope our leadership, our government, has the means and the resolve yes. to do what they need to do to root out this terrible, beastly cancer from Gaza yes. and from yes. other places. Because if you don't, like I said before, who is next? Where is next? Yes. What's next? You're actually enabling the next. You're allowing yeah. the evil to live and to perpetrate this evil again upon your own on, yeah. on your own it's a it's a metastasizing that cancer that you have yes. to take care of if you if you can and i believe that we are in a position where we can um mm -hmm. and and i just hope and pray that we're we're able to do this although i have to tell you uh i have a facebook account and i look at facebook you know often nowadays much more often than ever mm -hmm. and um I guess because of the algorithm mm. of Facebook, once you're spending a little extra time on a certain topic, they feed you that same topic again and again and again. So a couple of days ago, I was watching uh, some talk show where somebody was justifying the fact that um, that Israel is the perpetrator because of what they're going to do in Gaza and how many people have died in Gaza, which nobody's happy about. The average citizen, nobody's happy about that. Uh, and uh, and so now in my feed, it's just like every second video on YouTube is another denier of what Israel needs to do and must do. Mm -hmm. and, and they're totally anti-Semitic. So now I now I have to do now I have to watch something that for a long time that's going to initiate the good the good positive videos that can make me feel like oh at least somebody's in our corner. But right now my feed is filled with what I would call hate stuff. 
yes. against the Jews, against Israel, apartheid state, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and I'm, I'm sorry to say, some of it comes from Jewish intellectuals, mm. which is very painful. Very painful. They they can't I, seem to bleed for their own people. Yeah. Can I ask a question, please? Sure, Audrey. Where are you How from? Are you, where by where the are way? you? Audrey, where are I, you now? I'm in San Diego and I love seeing your face and I did still have your sharing and I shared that with my group when I came back. Oh, about how nice to hear. You got. Yes, I enjoyed your sharing with us. Thank um, you. I was, speaking, I was speaking to a lady yesterday and was explaining um, the Gaza Strip and I said to her, and the Lord forgive me, I said, I don't see how I don't see how the IDF can do anything but plow down Gaza because the houses that are there, probably tunnels are built under them and the parents um, are being paid by the government if their child goes out and kill an Israeli. So I mm -hmm. said, how would you resolve this if you don't literally... I see it as it has to be plowed. I don't know how that will be, but aren't there in Israel, I mean, in the Gaza Strip, aren't there known that there are tunnels underneath many, many, many homes and sure. that the people themselves um, support it? I know everybody doesn't. I saw a video where, you know, the Arab Jews relationship with parents and all. But this is war. This is hell. I mean, when yeah. I see um, bodies, um, I thought, I, I mean, it, it 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 knocked me to my core that they would chop off the head of the idea of soldiers and then show them online that go, girl Noah that they kill when they found out she's a reservist. So I, I'm just wondering, how will this resolve unless Gaza itself is obliterated? Well, Israel, thank God, is well known for its, uh, what they call in Hebrew, um, tohar haneshek, which means the, its purity of arms. In other words, Israel is well known that before it comes in with any kind of an incursion, it sends messages, drops leaflets, and tells the people, get out of the way. Get out of the way. We're ready to X, fill in the blank, whatever it is. Get out of the way. Find a safe space because we're coming in. That to me is uh, is a, a very merciful way, if you will, of trying to protect those who are innocent. Yes. Uh, now, some people may say there's nobody innocent in Gaza. I, I find that hard to believe. Right. But no. but it's it's something you know. Even when you even when you deal with cancer, there are some good healthy cells that are affected. And and uh, and the IDF has never ever exhibited a callous indifference to human life ever. We we mourn in whatever way we can over life that was innocent that we might have uh, taken, and we certainly don't pass out candies. Nobody's passing out candies in Israel when we hear of any uh, collateral damage that is done. Yes. So it's uh, it's just two different mindsets. One is, you know, let let's get rid of these terrible, dirty Jews that don't deserve a homeland or don't deserve anything. And the other mindset, which is, thank God, what we have is our mindset is for every life that's taken that's innocent, we feel terrible. Certainly, don't pass out uh, sun-kissed fruit gels. Or juju bees, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if in the Gaza they would pass out juju bees. This I don't know that they would do that. But um, it's just two different societies. One, and it says in the end of Deuteronomy, I, God says, "I present before you uh, life and blessing, death and curse, and therefore choose life." Yeah. And thank God, the Jewish yeah, people yeah. throughout the millennium, we have chosen life for ourselves and for others to be a light unto the nations to give light to give life and there are others mm -hmm. who choose to live in darkness 
and want only death and destruction for whatever reasons they have. And it's a mm. very, very, mm -hmm. so I, I just want to give you two different scenarios of what's going on here in this country that will give you a sense of, uh, of, um, of the highs and lows, if you will. So uh, we live in number 12 on the street called Judah the Maccabee. Number 12. Very nice. In our neighborhood in Efrat, there, all the streets are named re related to the Hanukkah miracle. Okay, so we live on Judah Maccabee, uh, number 12. A few days ago in number 14, I'm pointing like I know where I am. I'm in the safe room now, not because we have to, but that's where our office is. Uh, number 14, a family had a son, 21 years old, whose name is Roe Weiser, who was murdered by Hamas. He was on the front mm -hmm. lines, I think. I don't know the circum, but murdered, 21 years old. And so yesterday, finally, after a few days, when they were finally able to process him, take care of him in a Jewish ritual way, right now there is 1,300, if not more, funerals that have to be taken care of. How do you do that? How do you do mm. that? Where, where do you go? Where do you bury these people? It's a whole other story. It's a whole other uh, concern. Anyway, so in number 14, they said, there was a text passed around in the community. They said that the family, the Wiser family, will be leaving their building. This was yesterday. Um, leaving their building Wednesday morning at 9.30 or 10.30 perhaps. And they will begin their journey to the cemetery which is about a 15 minute car ride. So um, I don't know the family personally, but I'm next door, I stepped out and up and down the street, people are waiting quietly with Israeli flags, waiting to greet the family as they emerge from the building and, and kind of walking behind the van that has the family and escorting them part way. Other people were at the cemetery all the, somebody took a video of this, a 15-minute video, the ride from number 14 Judah Maccabee to the cemetery. All the streets are lined and packed with people with Israeli flags. And just the presence of all these people must have been a high level of comfort and consolation to the mourning family. So that's one scenario. The other scenario, we got this uh, lovely video from our daughter and son-in-law today. We we'll live in Ramat Beit Shemesh, a little bit outside of Jerusalem. And there was a convoy of cars riding through the street that they live on with pe people honking their horns, holding Israeli flags, singing songs of victory and hope and, 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 uh, and faith. Uh, and, and people on the street were cheering. They were cheering as if to say, we know that with God's help, this is going to come out okay. We know that with God's help and without it, we are nothing. But as long as we have God's help and we do whatever we can to, to help each other and we try to minimize, if not eliminate, the divisiveness that has been uh, gripping this country for the last many, many months. Uh, so there was a, a, a cheerful, you have to watch the video. I'm not, you're not going to watch the video, but a cheerfulness mm -hmm. Flags, songs, uh, our our two uh, grandchildren. One is almost six, and one is almost three. Jumping up and down, singing along with the music. Mm. So that, that mm. that's another scenario. So the the, the low was yeah. at number fourteen, yeah. Judah Maccabee, and the high was in that neighborhood. And I'm sure it's not the only neighborhood that had people uh, trying to smile, trying to be hopeful. Uh, and that mm -hmm. is the that's the name of our national anthem, Hatikva, mm -hmm. which means the hope, the hope. Oh, and, and and this is what we we put our faith and trust in Hashem, in God, that uh, you know, without us he can't, without him, he won't. You yes, know, amen. so uh, we just we just as as we're going through the valley of very, very tough emotional times, we pray. As we have many, many times that we emerge, we emerge with great victory, great praise for God. And uh, we hope and pray that uh, the losses are minimized, that the hostages are released safely, yes. 
whole, mm -hmm. whole. They should be released mm -hmm. whole. And mm -hmm. we pray for the bereaved families that they should receive comfort from heaven, comfort from their families and friends and neighbors. And all those who are injured, there are over 3,000 at this point, 3,000 uh, Israelis mm -hmm. injured. We mm -hmm. hope that they find a complete and speedy recovery, a recovery of the, the mind, the spirit, the soul, their body. Um, so we're, we're looking for, God willing, a, a good outcome at the other end of this uh, very, very long tunnel. I, I like to say, my wife will tell you, I say this often, uh, there is a light of the at the end of the tunnel. I don't know how long the tunnel is, <laughs> but I'm faithful that there is a light at the end of it. Amen. Amen. Can I give you a verse because I'm going to have to run? Okay. Please know, please know that um, from I came back from Israel on this last tour, I have been seeking with all my heart to let people know the truth about Israel, the truth about what's going on that we in the West do not seem to understand. Uh, yesterday, I sent out a verse that I found when I was reading in Deuteronomy. It says this, when the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the children of men, he set the bounds of the peoples according to the number of the Israelites. So I wrote to them, I says, how much do we owe Israel? So please pray for her during this horrible conflict. So brother, uh, I just want to let you all know that I love Israel with my heart and soul and whatever I have. And we are standing here as best we know praying and trusting God. And then the other thing was in his, uh, Ezekiel, the Lord gave me um, how he dealt with the Midianites because he said, I may, I may discipline you for as a father disciplines a child, yes. but you Midianites have evil in your heart and therefore I will fight the battle for her. You don't really have to do anything. You stand as a light holding the truth and I will fight the battle for her. And that is my hope that God himself would go through and wipe out this, I consider Hamas uh, a sickness, a disease, a, a cancer that needs to be extricated from um, the land of Israel. And I've gone back and traced her boundaries. And it says from the Mediterranean Sea, oh, uh, so I don't know how we will ever get the West to understand truth. But on Audrey's little watch, I am doing my best to let people know Israel is God's covenanted people. And I bless you all and I pray for you and love you all. And Stephen and, and Al, you know you guys are in my heart and Samuel to stay because this trip really did something within my heart toward you. Audrey, I, I can't Blessings. thank you enough for your beautiful words and your beautiful wishes and your beautiful hopes. It means so, so much to those of us who are here on the front lines Amen. in whatever way we are on the front lines. What you said was extremely precious and uh, and. Uh, Amen. We have a teaching that says... And tell your wife, she's still my best friend. Tell your oh, wife, oh, she's good. still okay. my BFF. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we enjoyed seeing you recently. Yeah, so there's yes. a, teaching in right. Judaism, a teaching in Judaism that says what comes from the heart enters the heart. Amen. So what All you right. just said came right into my heart, and I really, really appreciate it. All right. Thank Good you, guys. Bye-bye. You. You, you take care of yourself. I will. <laughs> yep. So, um, do I have time to mention one more thing? Yes, absolutely. We okay. will take as much time as you want, Elon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, in a few minutes, I have a. Uh, I teach in a, a girls' high school, uh, about a half hour from here. So we have a Zoom staff meeting, because next week all our classes will be on Zoom. Mm. This week there was no school anywhere. And next week there will be Zoom classes everywhere. We don't know how long it'll uh, it'll be. Could you know? It's kind of like COVID. Remember all those weeks and months of uh, 
Anyway, I wanted to mention this. Um, here in Israel, there has been, as I mentioned a few moments ago, there has been a lot of divisiveness mm -hmm. over various things and uh, democracy. What is democracy? Courts. Terrible, terrible divisiveness, not just words, but deeds. And people always kept saying, those who were in the know about populations and history, they said, we are on the brink of a civil war here in this country. That's what people were saying. So here we are now, as Jewish people, as Israelis and others, reacting to this god-awful war, anticipating what we need to do. And we're not thrilled to do it, except to excise the cancer. Yeah. And here we are. We're um, we're getting we're getting together, and helping each other in ways that we were not doing for the last several months. There is a sense of unity. People have been saying, "Oh, this war is like 9/11." I don't know enough about that to equate the two. I don't. I really don't. I mean, I I was there for 9/11. I can say that this is more like September 12th and 13th and 14th. I remember the mood in America. We were in Baltimore at the time. The mood in America was uh, you walked into a 7-Eleven, you walked into any kind of a store, and people were asking each other, how are you doing? How are you doing? You know, Baltimore is three and a half hours away from New York. Mm -hmm. how, how are you doing? Are you okay? Didn't know each other. Held doors for each other, doors open. How are you doing? Can I get something for you? Let me help you reach that. Oh, you dropped the coffee? I'll get a mop. That's the way people were. So that's kind of the mood and spirit and tone and tenor of what we have here now. There's a, just a deep desire to be helpful and and to, uh, to, to be sensitive and empathetic to other people. So uh, my daughter, who lives in Ramat Beit Shemesh, her name is Ariella, she made a list, compiled a list of all the different ways she has seen on, on uh, f Facebook, various WhatsApp groups, all the different ways that people have been wanting to be helpful, to send soldiers uh, vests, to send them jackets. You know, many of the soldiers, when they signed up, they left on mm -hmm. Shabbat, they left on Saturday, right? During a, uh, the last of the holidays of the high holiday season. Oh, they didn't take the stuff they need. They needed to get the heck out of there as soon as possible to go to the uh, to the front lines. So they don't have a lot of things. So, so my daughter compiled a list of all kinds of things that people have been doing in order to help others in this effort. So I just want to give you a sense of uh, I don't have that list. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you the the parameters. It goes anywhere from there's a certain battalion that needs uh, warm socks, they need underwear, they need t-shirts, they need jackets, they need vests. They also could use some sandwiches. They need uh, bamba, which is this peanut butter cheese curl. It's a <laughs> peanut butter curl, uh, which is uh, very good and sticks to your teeth for the next three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> they could use all kinds of snacks and whatever. So that's that's one way to help. On the other side, there are families who have let other people know through YouTube, you know, Instagram, all different kinds of uh, ways. They've let people know that they are, listen to this, they are ready to take in and raise orphans from this war. Mm. Ready to take in and raise kids that are orphans. Where does that come from? Where does that empathy and kindness, Hebrew word chesed, where does that come from? You know, I can give a bag of bamba. I can give a, you know, a thousand shekels and they can buy all kinds of underwear and uh, and clothing and what. But but to to commit to raising an orphan of a war, take them in and raise them. Mm. You know, that at, I read that and it floored me that people can have that kind of an open heart. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know that I could do it. But thank God there are people who are sincere, mm. empathetic, 
and who are glad to do it if 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 needed. Well, Ilan, what you have just said, uh, this is not by any means the first time in Jewish history that this has happened. And it's why the Jewish people have survived as a nation and as a people. And mm. yeah, you said earlier, the Jews are the canaries in the mines for all the rest of us. It's for the good as well as for the for the works of our enemy. Yes. So this example is awesome. Let me tell you a story. Bev and Steve have heard this. This is why I'm not concerned about the ultimate outcome. Because um, last July, when we were in Tel Aviv, just before we went up to Jerusalem, we went to the Yitzhak Ravin Center. Mm. And saw the the uh, exhibit, learned about his life, the life of Israel. Um, it was very moving. And then at the end, when we turned in our headsets, because we had listened to the tour in English on our headsets, the gentleman there mm. who took them said, now you know about the miracle of Israel, 75 years of miracle, and Netanyahu will destroy it in one second. Now, I had a choice <laughs> of being offended because obviously we're probably not seeing eye to eye on a few things, yeah. but I, I took that as a teaching point. If this man with whom I most likely disagree, and I don't know how observant, how religious he is as a Jew, if, if he can see that Israel is a miracle and can recognize that the miracle comes from Hashem, Yes. who has preserved his people all along and is keeping his promises to his people, even though we may be diametrically opposed in so many other ways, well, I'm not worried about the ultimate state of Israel because the Jewish people will come together when it's important. Guess what? We're seeing it right now. Exactly. And exactly. I and I think the question for all the rest of us out here in the nations, it's not well, is Israel going to achieve victory? No, it's they are going to achieve the victory. What will we do to help? Right. It's a good point, Al. Mm -hmm. We're like I said in the beginning, we're not just fighting this for Israel. Yeah. This is a bigger, bigger war. This is a bigger, bigger correction. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are we are fighting not just for us, but we're fighting for light. We're fighting for right versus wrong. We're fighting for good versus evil. And this, as, as I said earlier, it's a, this is a defining moment for humanity. Amen. Amen. Listen, I, I, I almost have to go, but I want to thank uh, you, Al, uh, Steve, and uh, Clint, Barbara, mm -hmm. Joshua, Bev, Samuel. And whoever else might be on and whoever else might see this recording, I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you all for your so important support and love and prayers. And that carries us very, very far. It yeah. gives us a lot of hope. And um, it's it's the wind beneath our wings Amen. when Amen. we know when we know that all of you are with us. So we really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Our prayers okay. are with you and Rivka, your whole thank house. You, thank you so much. We we, yeah. we bless all of you. Okay. Bless all of you to continue to add your voices and prayers uh, to what we're doing. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks. Leitrot. Leitrot.